you why did you decide to name your company silent partner um i mean how did that <laughs> because uh, very simple people would see my name on the records they would see d simmons so they thought i was a ghostwriter. <laughs> so we would we we would show up at all these events and go to the Grammys and all the, you know, whatever the awards were. And when people would finally meet me, they go, "Oh, you're D Simmons. You're the silent partner." We thought that D Simmons was a ghostwriter. I go, "Nope, I'm a real person." Goes, uh -huh. "Oh, you're the silent partner behind Ellie and Babyface." I go, "Well, if you want to say that." So it was very simple for me to call it silent partner. I'm the silent partner. You know, because they were the producers. They were getting all the publicity and notoriety, okay. as they should have, because mm. they are they earned that. So I was kind of in the background just writing, but people would always see my name but never see my face. Yeah. You know, because they were the, you know, they were the they were the producers like Jimmy and Terry, LA and Babyface, Teddy Riley. Yeah. I wasn't like a known producer at that time. Yeah. So it was easy for me to just name my company when I left LaFace. Eh, that's gonna be called Silent Partner. <laughs> yeah. So when I first easy. heard of you, it was when um, L.A. and Kenny had their fallout. And then Kenny mm -hmm. was saying, well, you know, L.A. and I uh, weren't friends like uh, Jimmy and Terry. Daryl was my best friend. So that's why we do a lot of stuff. And that's yeah. what brought you to the public eye. Did you f all of a sudden get a lot of publicity? How did it feel of like, you know? He um, it was OK. You know, I, I was always a silent partner. I was comfortable being in the background. You know, I didn't want to be an artist. You know what I mean? Um, I, I did want people to know what my talent was, but it was okay. You know what I mean? It happened when it was supposed to happen for me. Uh, Any time before that, I probably wouldn't have been ready. So it was good that I went through those, those growing years with them and learning how to make records and learning how to dot the I's, cross the T's. And so it, it, it came when it was supposed to come. It came at the right time for me. So... Um, I don't. I don't have any complaints about it. You know what I mean. You just want to be recognized for what you do. Yeah, that's it. You know, I, I've always wanted to be a songwriter. I'm a songwriter at heart. I don't want any more than what I'm supposed to have. So, you know what I mean. That's uh, that was always my way. So, but yeah, Kenny's always been so you know selfless in that way. He doesn't. He's so humble and gives, and you know, he, he's just he's been the same guy since I met when I was 14 you know wow. so yeah uh owe him, owe him a lot <laughs> yeah we recently, owe him a lot for sure we, we recently just lost Jesse Powell and I know you you did some work yeah. on his debut album I couldn't believe that I was so shocked I loved working with Jesse you know so underrated didn't have the big hit mm. but he could sing his ass off man he could sing his ass off I worked with him a couple of times I had fun working with him great voice uh yeah I was shocked yeah, really, really good guy. Really good guy. Glad I got a chance to work with him. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what what can we start, look and expect to hear from you production wise? Because, you know, I know, you know, all the tunes are out there. There's there's um, mm -hmm. um the there's a lot of um, we're, a lot of us are put off with a lot of the R&B that's out there because it's almost as if rappers are telling are trying to R&B right. artists are trying to. So <laughs> what is it that you how are you? as a songwriter producer um, trying to navigate in this? Well, you know, I've kind of slowed down. I'm glad you asked because I'm finishing a Christmas album Okay. that I've been wanting to do. So we're going to release it on, I think it's November the 8th. Uh, I put together 10 songs, 10 original songs. I've always loved Christmas music. I've done Christmas music with Tony Braxton and different people on their albums. Yeah. So I decided to do an album myself. So it's really, a, it's like a, not that I'm on his level, but like, you know, Quincy Jones did back on the block. Yeah, yeah. But Quincy doesn't sing, but Quincy's the producer. Yeah, yeah. So Jimmy Terry album, just did something right now recently. Yeah. My thing is Daryl Simmons' Christmas with You. And I got some people that are singing that have sung on a lot of my records, have sung on Aretha records that are viable people who sing. Okay. And so I got 10 original songs. Uh, I'm really happy with it. It's finished. So that's what I'm working on and focus. So I'll have to come back, you know, give me some time so I can promote it with you. Yeah, please uh, do. And we'll, yeah. And we'll, and we'll get you, we'll get you a copy of it, but I'm really happy with it. It's really, it's been a labor of love, something I always wanted to do. And, you know, I've never produced a whole album period on anybody, on wow. any project. I've never been a full producer like Kenny did exhale. I've never produced a full album. So this was my, my opportunity to be in the executive seat, write the songs, produce the songs, 
<laughs> get everything mastered, lyrics, credits. I'm like, whoa, this is a lot of work, you know? <laughs> so, cause I'm used to turning it in and you know, the record people do it. Yeah. So, but it's been fun. It's really been good. I love it. It's, it's, it's I got, my kids are involved. My wow. older brother is involved. Uh, so it's like a family affair. Uh, so I really, I really love it. It's 10 original songs, no cover songs. We've already heard all those songs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the songs that I came up with and I think people will like it. And so that's kind of like my last, what I'm calling my last body of work. Wow. How you come? Know, Are you ready to retire? I don't know. Uh, kind of, sort of. I mean, you know, I mean, sometimes you get retired, you know, the phone doesn't ring. So, you know, uh -huh. go, okay, nobody's calling me. So, and music has changed. So I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? I'm okay with it. Uh, I did a song with Kenny Lattimore that I really love called You Never Know on his new on his new album, Never Knew. I did that. I get a couple of calls a year about something that, you know, I may want to work on. But for the most part, yeah, I've done a lot, man. I've done a lot of work. <laughs> I'm happy. You know, did more than I ever dreamed I'd do. So, um, but yeah, you know. I say I'm retired until Kenny calls. So <laughs> Kenny calls. I got I to gotta take that call. You got to take that. But I, I, I take guess, that call, so, and I guess you know. this is what you started off with when you mentioned about being in the background, not signing with Solo yeah. and, and being able to have, take care yeah. of the business. Absolutely. Where, where most people, you know, everyone is, everyone has a story about selling their royalties and publishing no. without realizing and stuff. Oh yeah. I, I, I learned well. I've done well for myself. You know, you, you know, a lot of people, Johnny Gill, or people come to my house. Go, Damn, man, this your house? <laughs> <laughs> I go, yeah. You know, I didn't. I didn't, uh, yeah. I didn't screw it up. You know, so I and I learned a lot from 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 Kenny. You know, I learned a lot from Kenny in L.A. And like I said, the mistakes that they made. Uh, I had good business people around me, and uh, so I've done. I've done well. Like I said, I don't. I'm I'm okay. In other words, yeah. you know, I'm I'm okay. I don't have to, I don't have to work on music for money. Yeah, you know, music music has come full circle. I go to the piano, I write for fun. The Christmas album is for fun. It's for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this big million seller. Or I think I'm gonna do this. Yeah, the Christmas yeah. album is for me. I'm doing this for myself because I love working on Christmas music. And if five people say they bought it, they loved it, I'll be like, you did? Wow. Thank you. So this is a body of work, something that I'm doing for me, not for a record company, not for an artist. I'm doing this for me. And uh, I'll make sure you get a copy because I, I really like it a lot. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. And I'll send it to you first and you listen before I come back on. Okay. I know. Yeah, definitely. hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's really, it's really nice. We're going to do a, a pre-release. I forget a girl, Renee, that works for me is doing all that. You'll hear, you'll hear about it. Okay. She'll let you know. Oh so, yeah. Well, yeah. well that, it's it's been it's been it's been fascinating. It's been great. I mean, especially since we don't really get to see you or hear hear much about you. Um I'm around. Yeah. yeah I'm around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean it's um and I definitely I definitely appreciate Renee sending this album out and I definitely want to get back, especially for your Christmas album, because I think that's something yeah, we will. That, we'll get it to you. Yeah, it's because it's, it's definitely it's special. It's special. I think it's really special and I think you'll like it. I think people will like it. It's uh, it's a little different, you know. Got a nice variety, and have some people that you haven't heard of before, but they deserve the shine that they get on the album. So I think you'll like it. Make sure you get it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but have you ever thought about doing your own, just getting mm -hmm. your own artists and stuff, or is it just yeah. like <laughs> just too much work? Too much work. <laughs> You're right. Too much work, man. You already know. Too much work. <laughs> this was a lot of work. You know, wow. but this was fun. This was fun because it was people that come in from their job. They work from nine to five. They come to studio seven o'clock. Give me what I needed. They were excited. No egos. Nobody tripping. No divas. It was like it was so much fun, man. It was so much fun to do. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But you're so in the position. You had the position that you could call anybody to say, "Come on," but you didn't. You know, want, you and didn't it, want and the project. Yeah, it did start that way. The project started that way. I was going to call Tony, Johnny Gill, I was going to call Kevon, I was going to call Kenny Lattimore, I was going to call, you know how long it would have taken me to get that album finished? Uh, yeah, yeah, With yeah. all the scheduling, Under red, yeah, yeah. the egos, <laughs> let's keep it real, the divas, <laughs> they would have done it, when would they have done it? Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Oh, it's Christmas time. Oh, okay, I'll get to it. It's taken five years. Yeah. So I thought it was a better story to give some other people an opportunity who otherwise wouldn't get an opportunity to shine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's give them an opportunity that they wouldn't normally get. And these people, you're going to see, they're like, wow, I can't believe they don't have records out. And you I know? guess it's the same story as, as Tony, who, if Anita, if Anita had taken those records... Exactly. Could... It's the same. It's the same as if kids were on American Idol that we never seen before. Mm. Wow, they sing really good. And all of a sudden, Kelly Clarkson's got a record deal. All of a sudden, Carrie Underwood's got a record deal. They were yeah. unknown when they went to American Idol. These kids are the same way. Same level of talent. Yeah. Just have never been discovered as a lead singer. They sang on records and backgrounds for me, but as their shine as a solo, one girl, Latoya London, I will give that away. She sings on the album and she was on American Idol. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember Latoya. She yeah. came at the same time yeah. with um, Fantasia and um, Right. Latoya and sings and on the album. She lives here and uh, someone knew her and I met with her and she, and she sings beautifully on one of my records. So, but other than that, you know, I think it's a better project this yeah. way. I think it's, I think it has a little, little bit more meaning. It's a better story. Yeah. You know? No, okay. I yeah, can't, it's a better yeah, story. Can't wait for us to promote that. Um, yeah, I, I, love, I appreciate that too. <laughs> yeah, I always end my interviews by asking my guests that if you were stuck in an elevator and I had to watch a movie until they got you out. So this is more like, what's your favorite movie, all-time movie? Uh, it'll be Shawshank Redemption. Okay. It's Next the... would be Training Day. <laughs> okay. But Shawshank, yeah, Shawshank's is, the movie. Is Shawshank's probably... the movie. Yeah, okay. that's the movie. I don't care when it's on. If I'm sitting in the bedroom, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> I stop. <laughs> yeah, great, I mean that that that, that is yeah. That's probably one of the top twenty song films that are ever made. Yeah, and, great movie. Yeah, yeah. And what's your yeah. all-time favorite song by anyone? So not 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 necessarily your own. But it could be but my like, all-time favorite song. Go to is song. Mar Mar I was Marvin Gaye's "Distant Lover." Okay, I don't think I've heard that's that. what really you don't know. Oh, you got to listen. There's a there's a record version and there's a live version that's even better. Wow. So listen to the listen to the live version. Okay. We actually took the crowd from the live version and used it in the live version of two occasions. The crowd that's where the crowd came from. <laughs> that's a secret. So now you know the secret's out. <laughs> Whose idea was it? Was it yours? That was my idea because I knew Distant Lover live. And so then LA wanted to do a mix of two occasions live. And so I said, oh, use this. You got to use this crowd because the girls are screaming for Marvin at the end of the song. <laughs> and we used it at the top of uh, two occasions. Uh, this is a live version or something. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, Marvin Gaye's A Distant Lover. Because it, it, when I heard that record, I said, this is what my songs are supposed to make me feel. Wow. This, this, is, this is the love that it's supposed to make people feel. His emotion, how he sang. I said, okay, I get it. I got to make people feel this. I gotta, I gotta make them feel chill bumps when they hear my music. So wow. that's, it's for different reasons. I love the song, but it was kind of like that light bulb going off and saying, wow, okay. I got I got a lot more work to do on my songwriting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the emotion of that song really woke me up, said, okay, I get it, you know, yeah. yeah. What, what advice would you give any up and coming songwriters, producers, especially today, based on what you learned from your career? Um, just, just write, always write. Uh, you can't believe that everything you write is good. Okay. It doesn't matter that you have a hundred songs. It's like the songs that are hits really matter. Like I don't have a hundred songs. You know, I probably have two or three songs on my computer that I think are really strong ideas. So people get caught up in the quantity. Oh, I got a hundred songs. Like, well, none of them are, any, all of them aren't any good. Focus on a small amount, great ideas as opposed to the quantity of it because it doesn't matter you know what i mean yeah. uh -oh. Oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, think that's gonna, I think that's gonna signal us to sign off man yeah it is yeah definitely yeah, definitely yeah, well it's gonna sign us off yeah no you've uh, no it's been great um as i said it's been really fascinating um especially your journey and, and that's probably one of the things that we we'd love to hear because we we've known about you but we never oh, appreciate it, man. Not not yeah, really see so much and stuff. So um, yeah, I do I, I do look that. forward to coming coming back in November when your album. Yeah, let's out. come back. Yeah, well, I'll make sure when they get your copy and uh, so you can listen to it and really get into it. And yeah, it's a really good. I, I love the album. It's a good album. Ten songs. It's not really long. Yeah, that's what we want. But, we don't. Uh, yeah, those sixteen I, yeah, songs. I moved, 
No, no, no. Yeah. So I moved around, got a nice variety. Like I said, got my son is involved on a song, my daughter. Uh, so it's it's a family affair. And the people that I've worked with for years on record. So it's good. It's a good feeling record. I yeah. like it a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anxious, anxious, anxious for you to hear it. Sure. Yeah, no, yeah, give, give, definitely give 100% uh, feedback and stuff. Hey everyone, I want to thank you for being part of Halftime Chat. Um, this new update is really about our membership, and I'm really excited to be able to fully launch the membership page. There will be things like full interviews from day one. As soon as the interview drops, you get access to it without any ads on it. Um, there'll be some exclusive member only videos that will just be some behind the scenes stuff and some other things that we will never be broadcast um for some members you can be able to get actually two interviews because we do have i do have a backlog of almost two or th seven or eight interviews that i don't even know when i'm going to be able to broadcast them so you're able to get at least some of those up front and um and some some ex some just behind the scenes stuff because there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes that i have never been able to 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 talk about or release um for anyone else you know what the videos would still be the same um over f over a week or a week and a half or two weeks depending on how long it is um so everything stays the same the polls stay the same the community chats the community stuff stays the same but i think with the membership stuff i'm able to add a little bit more and invest a lot more time and energy in in in, in really supporting the members so I do hope you come on that ride with me. I appreciate the support. And um, this will just help me continue to invest in taking things to the next level. Take care.